What's up guys? In this video, I want to discuss the Sin Flood attack, which is a very popular attack that took down so many servers in the past life. Uh, most uh, DDoS uh, prevention mechanism prevents that, right? But how about we actually jump into it and show you how this works and what is it exactly, right? So guys, before we jump into the Sin uh, Flood, how does the TCP handshake work is a very critical thing for you to understand I'm, i made a video about it go check it out but the the the, the aspects of establishing a tcp connection always involve three-way handshake to to uh, for the server and the client to agree uh, on a sequence numbers for to label their packets on and and to order all that stuff and for the server to actually tell you that the port is open right so what does say hey I want to establish a connection to port 80, right? Here's my SIN, and I'm going to port 80. The server will reply back with something called SIN ACK, right? And that's basically saying, hey, am I going to acknowledge the SIN you just, re just received from you? And this is my sequence numbers. So we'll start that. And then the client will say, okay, I acknowledge your SIN ACK. That's the three-way handshake, and they then they start sending your GET request and POST request and all that jazz, right? So if we look at that packet level in the SIN, what do we actually send? What does this look like, right? It has, first of all, it's a TCP packet. So the destination IP address is A, right? And the destination port is 80, and the source port IP address is what? Is B. And the destination is what? Uh, the, the source port is what? I don't know, some random port, 12, right? And when the server receives that, it's going to use this information to send back the same packet. However, it will destine the destination become B in this case because it, it just looked up the source and just sends its own packet B and the destination port is 12 and will be literally... This is the source IP, in this case, A, and the source uh, uh, port is 80, and, the, and so on, right? So that's how it works. The ACK, can you guess how this will look like? Well, the um, the destination in this case is A, 80. It looks exactly like the first one, right? So this is B and 12, right? So that's how it works, guys. So we're going to attempt the same thing here, guys, but with a sin flood attack. And here's how it, how it is done. It says, hey... A, I want to, first of all, you need, first of all, you need to know that port 80 is open, right? And you can, you can know that by either previously knowing that port 80 is open or doing half open, TCP half open, and then do that stuff. And once you do, the client will send a malicious sin. It's a sin, all right, but it's a special sin. And here's how it looks like. The destination IP address is A. The destination port is 80, but here's what, what the client did. It's a sneaky client because it has access to the low level socket and it changed its source IP address to C. You might say, what the heck is C? I'm going to tell you. It doesn't exist. C is some poor schlop here, right? That even maybe this IP address doesn't exist and we don't really care to be honest, right? And here's the thing, when the server, now the poor slop server will try to respond and it says, okay, I'm going to respond back with my sin act, right? All right, who's my destination? Destination is whomever sent me, it will happen to be a C, right? <laughs> and, and port 12. And uh, this is my source, A and 80. And guess what? Now... The server will be waiting for an acknowledgement from C. Tough luck getting that, son. Because now the server is in a state where it's called half open state. And that consumes memory, man. That consumes a little bit finite amount of memory. And we talked about half open. Go check that out that video. But yeah, now the server will wait. And then after a while, what will do? It says, okay, I waited for a few seconds. Uh, server, let me try again. It will try sending it again, right? Ack, and does exactly the same thing. To C, where it doesn't exist. C doesn't exist, but it keep trying until it will die. But one half open connection 
doesn't really do much damage, right? One half open connection doesn't do damage, but imagine this. Imagine if the client or multiple clients does the same thing. It says, hey, here is another da damned sin. This is red this time because it's dangerous. And try client D. And here's another sin. And try client IP address E. The poor servile, and do, do this from just, not this, this machine, do this distributedly, right? Do this in a, uh, in a distributed denial of service. That's how it works, basically, right? So if you if this client does it, just one machine can do this, can can, talk, can take this server down if it does all that stuff, right? Because how else do you block it? You you cannot block C and D and E because these might be legit servers, right? But if the client actually put their own IP address here, this could be easily blocked. So okay, you're making too many sins. You're clearly a bad actor, but. If, the, if those IP addresses are spoofed, this is of course spoofed, which is just changed, right? Then the server will start responding with sin acts to just random, random places, which will never get any responses. And you'll not only end up with one half open connection, you'll end up with many half open connection, which will flood your memory right which eventually if there is a legit karen here so poor karen here right if she want to establish a connection with the server she can even get that decent connection because despite her being legit now sir can't do it all right guys so that's a sin flood attack obviously most uh, ddos provider blocks this attack right i'm gonna um i'm gonna sh see you in the next one guys this was a quick video describing the sin flood uh uh subscribe and like this video for more uh, networky stuff back in engineer stuff i discuss more of that stuff in this channel check out all this stuff and i'm gonna see you in the next one goodbye